All right, praise the Lord. I want to thank you everyone for joining us as we prepare for a time of study. And I know we all are anticipating that time when we can enter back into the house of the Lord. Amen, amen. Let the church say amen. The church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen by Pastor Marvin Wines. Amen. Thank God. I hope that your day is starting off well. Uh, we want to call your attention to 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. Again, 1 Kings chapter 18 verses 1 through 4. And if you're looking in your Lent study book, we are on page 40. If you have your Lent study book, we are on page 40. We want to thank God for our coming together. May we pray. Eternal Father, we thank you that we can come together through these various mediums to give you praise and to give you glory. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we Study and devote ourselves daily, O oh Lord, to your word, seeking to pray to you more and to study your word, to learn more about you and ourselves and even fast, O oh gracious Father. We hope and pray that our spiritual growth is increasing. We also pray, O oh Lord, that things physically around us are changing, Lord God, for our good. Lord God, we love and honor you in Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Again, if you have joined us, we'll be looking at in our Lent study book, page 40. And we will be introducing next week for those that have our wireless discipleship for Bible study. We'll be introducing this next Wednesday. We'll say more. Uh, we have a great week coming up. As far as, well, I may have did that a little too quickly. Wireless Discipleship by Jeremy L. Williams. And we want to thank Pastor Williams and their congregation, Phillips CME in the Connecticut area for supporting our ministry drive through our food drive outreach, which will take place uh, the next one, April the 3rd. But look with me at 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. And it reads as follows. After a long time in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Go and present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the land. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. Now the famine was severe in Samaria, and Ahab had summoned Obadiah, who was in charge of his palace. Obadiah was a devout believer in the Lord. While Jezebel was killing off the Lord's prophets, Obadiah had taken a hundred prophets and hidden them in two caves, 50 in each, and had supplied them with food and water. One of the themes that I'm seeing in this verse is how instructions were given to Elijah and Obadiah and they followed those instructions, which led to certain blessings to take place. As we think about Elijah, Lord told him to go and present himself to Ahab, and he went and did it. Uh, we hear about Obadiah receiving instructions, who was a devout believer in the Lord, and he went and did what he was told to do. But not only that, we find out that he had provisions set aside for those that were prophets that he had hid, hidden in, uh, in caves. I firmly believe in order for certain things to happen in our lives, we do need to follow God's instructions. 
Sometimes we feel that we can just approach life without any kind of pattern or rhythm. And I understand about being innovative and being creative and even being spontaneous. But there are a lot of times when we find ourselves in places like a drought, and that's what we're dealing with in this context. Uh, in fact, I think Elijah was in a three-year drought as we hear. We also hear it described as no rain had been in the land. And the verse two say that a famine had taken place and it was very severe. You could be in a famine in your life right now where things have dried up, no matter what it may be. It could be financial, it could be relationships, and the list can go on and on and on. Somehow a relationship with God is an understanding that God is the supplier of all of our needs, that we don't run dry because God ensures that we have everything that we need. I can appreciate in the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples to pray when they say, Our Father who art in heaven, how it be thy name, thy kingdom come, that he gives us what? Our daily bread. He makes sure that we have everything in today's journey. Let's turn our attention to the Lent study book. For those of you that have it, and if you don't, if you would just listen as we share with you, this booklet was developed by the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church jointly with the African Methodist Episcopal Church jointly with the African Methodist Episcopal Church Zion the various leaders of Christian education, in our case, General Secretary Dr. Carmichael Crutchfield, uh, helped to pull leaders together from across our Zion, along with others to compile. And today, and I hope I pronounce your name correctly on page 40, we have Ritney Castine. Ritney Castine. I want to share with you the middle paragraph that reads as follows. And the heading of 1 Kings 18, 1 and 4 is go and present yourself. Earlier, God told Elijah to hide himself. After a three-year famine, it was now time to present himself. This is a perfect season for believers everywhere to come out of hiding and to confidently present themselves in the face of of each challenge and each trial, knowing that God is well able to deliver us uh, on every promise that has been made to us. I'm going to read it one more time. Knowing that God is well able to deliver on every promise that has been made to us. Our position in the world and society at large is clear, and we can rest assured that our God is far greater than any fad, trend, or worldly influence. I want to highlight how our author has listed certain words that start with P. The author's talked about now is the time to present himself, to present. Also, we hear about this is a what? A perfect season, P, perfect. Uh, confidently present themselves. Then we hear the word that God is able to deliver on what? Every promise, P. And then we also hear about our position. So we hear the words present, we hear the words perfect, we hear the words promise, and we hear the word what? Position. Right now, like Elijah, we all have had to go into hiding or not be what? In person. But the time will come when we will have to present ourselves, present ourselves as in be public, to present ourselves as in be in person. So we need to be preparing ourselves for what that will mean, especially for those of us that are intending to re-enter the house of God, that we're there, but not just for ourselves, but for service. The other thing that is highlighted is that this is a perfect season. Now, when we look back at the scripture we just read, that season just so happened to be a period of what? A famine. In fact, a severe famine, a time of drought, a time of wilderness, a time where not all the food and water was in place. Many of us know what that felt like the past 12 months, whether it was last month due to the shortages, due to the snow that stayed about seven, eight days in our area at least. 
Many of us remember that back in March, April, May, and June, the scarcity of water, and we would go to the grocery store from time to time, and there was hardly any food on the shelves. And sadly, my brothers and sisters, there are some people to date that are still having these same kind of experiences, even uh, the past 12 months and, and some even longer than that. Notice how our author said it's a perfect season. Wow. Who would think in a time of famine that it's a perfect season to come out of hiding? The other thing we are reminded of is God's promises. In the Bible, God's promises are listed all over in numerous ways. And one of the things that I've learned as far as God being a promise keeper, that he's always provided, he's always protected. And in moments where things were not going the way that I thought they needed to go, I had to really go back and examine my relationship and then even wonder about what God was doing that sometime I didn't even understand. Yesterday, I watched a movie called, oh man. It was about the wars in Sudan, Darfur, I hope I said it correctly, where people were being oppressed and murdered and killed, uh, genocide, which happens all over the world, where people are being killed by the tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and even more. And these people go unprotected sometimes. And I began to think about God's promise and it really messed me up. And when I share this with you, I don't have an answer. It's just a struggle that we all deal with. How is it that God allows some people to be in some situations and struggle and be in such barren states? And yet there are those of us who are not in the same situations. I pray. I prayed last night. It was still grieving my spirit through the night and even this morning. There's always someone in a far worse situation than we are. And so I began to think more about people that are living in poverty day in and day out, people who cannot have food or water, people who are living in places and systems and countries and communities where they're just being mistreated time and time again. So that's been troubling my spirit. It has on and off over the years, but even more so right now. So I began to think about God's promises. And what I think about promises God has said some things in the word that may not have come true, but yet we have hope and we keep trusting God until what they do come true, until they do come to fruition. It also reminds me of our ancestors, talking about now on the uh, American soil. Many of our ancestors maintain hope and trust and faith in God, hoping and believing for a better day. And that day did come for many of us but it may not have come for them. But they held on to the promise, knowing that God was gonna come through. This last word we use with P, it says our position in the world and society at large is clear. And we can rest assured that our God is far greater than any fad, trend, or worldly influence. No matter what happens in life, good or bad, no matter what the struggles and the burdens we all may experience, some have far worse than others. We need to maintain our position, which is our relationship with God. We cannot be fair weather Christians or only want to be in relationship with God when things are well and then when things are not going our way. We want to fall out of God. We want to fall out. Uh, we want to fall out of our relationship with God. We want to fall away from the church. And then we want to lay our faith down. I hope and pray that we will strengthen our position. Right now is a great time as we're in Lent season to keep on praying, to keep on studying, and to keep on fasting so that what we do in our relationship can become strong in our spirituality. I hope and pray that you and your family are doing well. Those of you who are part of the Carter CME Church family, don't forget that this weekend is our 111th church anniversary. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you get this in time, uh, we do want you to contribute toward the various contributions, the ad booklet, and our contribution per year, $1 per year. Friday night, we'll have our devotion time, Lent season devotion time at seven o'clock. Then we'll go right into our virtual ad. Right after the virtual ad, we will have our family fun night, family game night. 
On Saturday, we have a movie scheduled at 3.30, Something the Lord Made. It's about a African-American doctor, and I haven't seen it yet. In fact, say I'll just wait till then. And we'll be doing all this via Zoom, so you'll get that information. Well, I sent it out earlier today, so please check your email. And then we also have another email coming out on Friday. And then we'll come together. I want to encourage everyone to be in 9.30 Sunday Church School on Sunday. And then at 10.45 a.m., we will come together for worship all Central Time right here at CarterMetroLTW.com. So have a great day. Wish you and your family well. Get your vaccination if you haven't had it. Continue to wear your mask. Stay safe. And let's work through this thing. I believe we'll get in there. Take care now. Ah, we got to close in prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you, Lord, that through instruction that we can strengthen our relationship with you. We thank you, Lord, that there are times we do need to be concealed or we need to be isolated. But then there are times when we have to be present, visible, and also public. We thank you, Lord, for our prom for the promises that you've given us. Sometimes we don't understand it all, but yet we will keep faith in thee. We will keep trust in thee. Oh, God, we love you. We praise you and we honor you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Look, have a great day. Take care.